Hello everybody, I'm Melissa and welcome back to Book Bar and welcome to my March mid-month wrap-up. Um, so this will be the 18 books that I read from the 1st to the 15th of March. Um, so halfway through the month. <laughs> and yeah, it, this is Ramathon month so I have been reading a lot. Basically any moment that I have I am reading because I want to get all of the team shadow points. So yes. But um, if this is your first time watching a wrap up of mine, I go in order of how I completed a book. So I might not have started it that way. Um, I'm currently reading a book that I started like the fifth of the month and I'm still reading it now. Uh, I'm just reading it very slowly. So yes, so these are in order of how I finished them. I know some people do it in order of like, liked the most versus like the least, but yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and like get on into it. So here are the 17 books and one DNF that I had so far this month. The first book that I completed was Bride by Ali Hazelwood. I gave this 4.5 stars. This is Misery and Low, and Misery is a vampire, and Low is a werewolf, and he, they are entered into an arranged marriage with each other because they, so in this world, this paranormal world, uh, there is vampires, werewolves, and humans. And the humans and the vampires have always had like a, an alliance because to keep the werewolves from taking over. And so they've always had an alliance, but now there's this new governor and she wants something to do with the vampires. So the vampire king is like, well, maybe we can make an alliance with the werewolves. And so he asks Missouri to marry the alpha of the werewolves and she agrees because her best friend has actually gone missing and she believes that Lo has a reason to um uh, but she believes that Lo is part of why her friend is missing so she agrees to this marriage um and yeah it had very interesting um, topics. It is not a megaverse, as some people said. I actually, so I read this for a, a an in-person book club, and I had to explain the difference between paranormal and fantasy, um, like that this is not a fantasy romance, it's a paranormal romance. And then I also had to explain the difference between like omegaverse and regular just paranormal romances. And yeah, it was very interesting. Everyone was like, and when I told them that there was Mpreg, I think that blew everyone's mind. Uh, but yeah, okay, so. That is the first book I completed. Then I also completed The Remarried Empress by uh, Alpha Tart. This is a, a manhwa, which is like a Korean version of a manga where the illustrations are all in color and it is gorgeous. Um, I heard about this one from Rachel Reads and Sings. And this follows a woman who her husband has asked her for a divorce and she says well then I want to get married as well because he wants to marry his con is um why can't I think of the word his mistress <laughs> he wants to marry his mistress and so she's like well then I want to get remarried too and it's kind of like telling the story of like how it got to that part but yeah I enjoyed it I gave it four stars it was a good start to a series then I finished The Notorious Lord Knightley by Lorraine Heath I read this for my historical romance reading vlog I will have linked up there I gave this five stars it is fantastic this is Regina and Arthur aka Lord Knightley and Regina and Knightley were supposed to get married and he jilted her at the altar he like shut up and was like hm, I can't marry you and she, Regina, was, she was the, uh, by blow of a, of a, I can't think of what, whatever he was, something up there. And so, usually they are not recognized by society, but he recognized his daughter. And, because he actually did, like, love her mom, even though her mom was his mistress, he really did truly, like, love her. And so he recognized his daughter and you know got her introduced her to society and in her first season she met Arthur aka Lord Knightley and they fell madly in love with each other and did things that people in love do and he had agreed to marry her and then he shows up and decides he doesn't want to marry her so 
now it's like five years later four or five years later I don't remember exactly what it was and she's back and now there is this story being written about this Lord K and everyone believes that it's nightly and they don't know and yeah it was so good and so angsty and there were so many secrets I loved it I gave it five stars I as I said then I finished The Score by Al Kennedy. This is the third book in the Off Campus series and I didn't love this one. I ended up giving it three and a half stars. Uh, this follows Dean and Allie and Allie has broken up with her, boy her boyfriend, long term boyfriend, and she goes over, she doesn't want to stay in the dorms alone. So she asks her best friend Hannah if or Hannah says, oh, well, you can stay at Garrett's because Garrett and I are gone. So you can just sleep in his room. It's fine. I'll tell um, Tucker and Dean, like, that you're going to stay there. It's fine. And tell Dean to leave you alone. Well, of course, that doesn't happen. And they have a, Dean and Allie have a wild night together. And yeah, it was very much like a lot going on. Um, there's a lot of grief in this and drug use and alcohol talks, <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, so if those are triggering for you, please do know that going in. Um, but yeah, I did not know that going in. Not that it affected my rating. I just didn't love what had happened, especially in like the third act. But yeah, uh, three and a half stars. Moving on. Then I finished Slaying the Shadow Prince by Helen Schur and oh my gosh. A book was so freaking good. Um, I give it five stars. Of course, uh, probably my favorite book of the month so far, but I loved it so much. This follows Talamere and Drew, and Talamere is this, um, like he's like a warrior basically, and very high ranking warrior guy. I can't think of what it, I can't remember what it, what the, Thing was called and Drew is not supposed to be wielding weapons because women who can wield weapons what um but she is a stubby female main character and her and Telomere cross paths because they believe that Drew is doing something she's not supposed to be doing which is not true but she really just wants to get rid of the shadow wraiths because they killed her whole family besides her dad and it was fantastic. And then she meets Talamere and realizes that um, he might have some shadow wreath in him. So yeah, it was so good. I gave it five stars. I loved it, as I said. Then I read Her Greatest Adventure by Hannah Cohen. This is the like second book of the spinoff series um, from the uh, Swift Hatchet trilogy. This follows Adeline and Cooper. And Cooper is um, Adam from book three's son. And Adeline is Ava and Oakley's daughter. And Adeline is going to go travel Europe for a while with her best friend. But something happens and her best friend's daughter not being able to go. And so she calls her parents and her parents are like, well, why don't you go with Cooper? So they convince Cooper to go with her. Cooper and her and Adeline go on this trip and they might end up married. Accidentally and everyone then finds out uh, partway through their trip so they have to go home and deal with the consequences of this and then uh cooper learns something that happened and doesn't immediately tell adeline he should have but like he was planning on it like he had fully planned on it and something happened and they decided to have spicy times instead. But yeah, they gave it to four and a half stars. It was very good. I really enjoyed it. Then I finished First Lie Wins by Ashley Elston. I gave this four stars. This is, or three stars. This is a thriller, um, but I wasn't very thrilled. Like, I never felt like high stakes in it at all. Um, I also read this for the same book club that I read Bride for, and everyone kind of agreed with me. Like nobody really, like, I don't know. It wasn't that, like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it because I'm not good at talking about those. I don't want to do, I don't want to say too much and give anything away. But this follows Evie Porter and she is trying to figure out what her boyfriend is doing. 
and she might have some more secrets than she's letting up, letting everyone believe. So yes, <laughs> then I had my first DNF of the month. And that was Say You Love Me by Johanna Lindsay. Um, I was kind of bored. There was a lot. I think if I read this series in order, I might enjoy it a little bit more because you do see a lot of like the family together and they have like, like there's just chapters of like the family. Um, I mean, I had made it almost 50% and like they had, the couple had barely had any interactions. So I just was like, you know what? Yeah, for now, I might go back to it. Then I finished If You Give a Single Bad a Nanny. This was an arc that I got, and this book actually just came out recently. Um, it will be in my new release vlog at the end of the month, but I absolutely loved this, and I gave it five stars. Um, this follows Marlo and Dylan, and Marlo is the fun, like, she moves in next door to Dylan and his daughter Lola. And she has this dog Waffles and she's an artist. And so she's just kind of like going with the a go with the flow type of person. And Dylan is very much not like that. He is very strict regimen. Um, he has when, and well, I'll get, so he's very strict on like how he has things done, what he wants done, what he wants his daughter to eat, like everything. And he has a nanny at the beginning and something happens and she has to go, she has to quit. She has to go back home to be with her family for a family emergency. And, you know, Dylan's mom is kind of meddling. If you read, um, if you give a grump a holiday wish list, the novella, like in the same, it follows um, Dylan's sister. If you read that, you know the mom's kind of meddling. She's a meddl meddlesome lady. She convinces Dylan to hire Marlo as the nanny. And so Marlo agrees because she really enjoys Lola and Lola loves waffles and loves Dylan. Waffles is the dog, by the way, not the food waffles. And so Marlo goes and Dylan has this binder, like massive binder, just full of like rules and what, what to be eat, what can be eaten and this and that and everything else. And, and Dylan or Marlo's like, blow it up. <laughs> uh, she was like, you need to have a little bit more fun, like do this. And so they end up doing that. I can't, yeah. So they end up falling. Dylan and Marlo, of course, end up falling for each other as time goes on and he can't deny his attraction to her. She can't deny her attraction to him. And yep, yeah, it was fantastic. Then I read Sweet Spot, Sweet Spot by Rebecca Jenchak. Um, I read this in my birthday vlog. I'll have linked above. Uh, I gave this four stars. This was a fun like take on the coach athlete uh, trope. Uh, this follows Lincoln and Ki Kiara, Kira, Kira. I don't remember if it's Ki Kiara or Kira, but either way, uh, Kira is the is on the women's golf team at her college, and she's practicing one day, and she learns that the boys team is having some like hot shot golf pro come in to like help teach them about their swings and things and she's like what the hell why does the men's team always get all this stuff we are so much better than them like we've won more championships blah 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 and so she meets Lincoln and kind of tells him off like oh why did you just come for the men like are we not good enough turns out that Lincoln had offered to do the, girl, the girls team and the coach of the girls team was like nah and the coach is a jerk and doesn't like Kiara because she is kind of a hothead. So things happen from there and Kiara convinces Lincoln to like coach her. She pays him to coach her. And then, you know, things go from there and they start spending a lot of time together and falling for each other. And yeah, I gave it four stars. Then I read Blitz by Devin Perry and I loved this so much. I gave this five stars. This is another like fun take on like a coach athlete without it being super taboo because Torin is the coach of the football team and Jensen is on the volleyball team. So not her coach, but still a coach. it is still forbidden because he's still a coach at the school. And they have a night together uh, on a 4th of July party. They don't know who each other is, but they have a night and then the school year starts and they realize that Jensen is the new hotshot ball player and Torn obviously is the football coach and things go from there. It was fantastic. There was a lot of sneaking around that wasn't so sneaky. So, yep. 
Yes. Then I finished Heartbreaker Handoff by Alex Martin, and I just love this series. This is the fifth book in the Varsity Dad series. Uh, every book in this series has been four and a half or five stars. Like, just fun, like, easy. There are some, like, high angsty moments. Um, this was a Not His Baby. This follows Roxy and Billy. And Roxy, if you read the third book, you know that Roxy is pregnant. And you know who she's pregnant by and he is a trash human and her best friend is Billy Babcock who the coach of the team can't stand because Billy is a loud mouth like he don't he's not afraid to say things but he's really actually just like it's kind of like a blustering like he's doing it for just to do it because he can't and he doesn't necessarily mean all of it and one day Roxy goes to tell her dad like what happened and she, he yells at her and is like berating her and Billy goes in and is like stop like what the heck and coach believes that it is Billy's baby and Roxy doesn't she doesn't say that it's not Billy doesn't say that it's not so they go on with this ruse for a while um until they realize that they can't and so Roxy does end up telling um everyone she had tried to tell the father but she went home she went to his house and realized that he was she was at his engagement party to his high school sweetheart who he had been cheating on her, who he had been cheating on with Roxy and Roxy had no clue um, and so she didn't want to tell him there because that's kind of messed up um, and she actually forms a friendship with said fiance and it was fantastic but yes I gave it five stars I loved it I just love the series um, it's fun. I would read them in order. I know you don't have to, but I would. I just feel like you get a little bit more if you do. Uh, then I read Heartstopper Volume 5. This is just a sweet, wholesome uh, graphic novel following Nick and Charlie. I'm sure you already know what it's about. It's Volume 5. So it's continuing their story. Then I finished Sinful Vow by Asia Monique. Uh, this is the first book in the Mafia Misfits series. This follows um this follows Lucia and Enzo and this series is all black mafia which is very good like it's very fun to see because obviously it's not common um but this is Lucia and Enzo and they end up in an arranged marriage um but turns out that maybe their arrangement was possibly orchestrated a different way so yeah, um, I enjoyed it. I just felt like there were some things that felt a little like jarring in the story. But yeah, I ended up giving it three and a half stars. I had a great time and I will continue the series. Plus just look at that stunning Hello Lovely Works cover. Love it so much. Then I finished a book I can't talk about because it's part of the, it's a St. Martin's Press um, story. I, so I'm not gonna talk about it. Um, hopefully when the boycott is over, I will be able to talk about titles from them, but for now, one is not gonna be talked about. Then I finished The Duke Who Didn't by Courtney Milan. This was also for my historical romance vlog. I'll have linked above. This follows Chloe and Jeremy, and Jeremy is keeping a secret from everyone in town. Um, he comes to this town once a year, but it's been a couple years since he's been there, and Chloe is mad at him because she has had a crush on him the whole time. And he just like stopped showing up. Well, you learn why. Uh, and he turns out everyone in the town already knew his secret. Uh, so it really was not a big deal, but yeah, it was cute. I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars. Then I finished another favorite and that was The Bride Goes Rogue by Joanna Shoup. I just absolutely love it. Um, it well, this was so good. This follows Catherine and Preston and Catherine believes that her and Preston are going to get married. They are betrothed together. Their parents, their dads made this arrangement um, between them when they were business partners and she's waited a year and is finally like, you know what? We need to get together um, because she has now like her first year in society or her first year that she was supposed to come out, uh, they were in mourning so she couldn't be presented. Then she spent a year waiting for our president. So she is getting old. Like she's getting to the, I'm getting to spinsters territory. Um, people are going to start questioning. So she goes to Preston. It's like, all right, I've waited a year. Let's start making these plans. What do you want to do? And he's like, I'm never going to marry you. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, not going to happen. 
And so she is very distraught by this. I'm just like, I waited an entire year. I I just want to go have some fun. So she convinces her friend Nellie to take her to a like sexy party. And so she goes and there she's dressed up and she meets a man who's also in disguise and things go, there's some weird stuff happening at the bars outside. Um, things go from there and it turns out that each that Preston was the man that was in disguise and Catherine was obviously the woman and yeah, it was really good. I gave it five stars also for the historical vlog. Then the last book that I finished in the first half of the month was Stay With Me by Brooke Montgomery. I got an audio arc of this from Forever and Always PR. Thank you so much to them. Um, this follows Trip and Magnolia. And this was pitched as a Not His Baby. Uh, but I knew going in that that part of the story didn't happen until later. Had I not known that, I probably would have liked this less. But it, because I knew that going in, I knew to like temper my uh, emotion, like, to my expectations towards it. So I ended up giving it four stars. Um, it was Aiden Snow and Savannah Peachwood. They did a phenomenal job as Trip and Magnolia. And this has one of my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite micro tropes. Um, I mean, I can say it. It's not a spoiler. It has Tattoo For You. I'm not going to say who is the tattoo or what it is of or where it is, but Tattoo For You is like one of my favorite micro tropes. And it has it, so it gets a whole star just for that. <laughs> Plus, um, I cried. Uh, this book deals a lot with, in the prologue, which it says, like, you can skip the prologue, uh, Tripp's best friend drives drunk and ends up dying. And, which I'm not, it's not a spoiler, it's, it says it in the beginning, like, as, like, a content warning, like, it says, like, if that's triggering for you, skip this, please. Um, and so, it does, like, and so, that is a big deal in Tripp's life, like, and how he goes about things, and I fully understood Tripp's like anxiety towards drinking and driving like I remember in college because I don't like I'll have a beer now that I'm older now that I'm over 21 like I can have a beer or a glass of wine and know that I'm fine to drive because I'm in my 30s and like I know my tolerance level and obviously like if I have a mixed drink or something it's a little different but a beer or a glass of wine I know I can drive and it won't be an issue but when I was in college uh all my friends would like go out partying and drinking and like if I had a beer especially before I was 21 uh if I had a beer I would not get behind the wheel at all um because I have some I had some personal stuff happen with someone in my family and I so like I understood trips like hesitation towards all things drinking and driving and then like and there was just this part where he was talking to his friend um and I teared up it I got really like emotional towards it so yeah <laughs> long tangent on that but yeah I ended up giving it four stars it was a good really good story um and I'm glad I knew going in that the like not his baby wasn't gonna happen for quite some time um and there is no cheating just so you know like it spends it it spans a couple weeks before you realize that she's pregnant. So, yeah. That is all I have for now. I talked a lot. <laughs> but those are the 18 books that I have completed, or 17 books and one DNF that I had for the first half of March. If you made it to the end of this video, leave me a, leave me a bird emoji because the birds outside are doing something really weird. So, yeah. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. All that fun stuff, it really helps me out. And I'll talk to you all in the next one. Bye.